All right, um, welcome to the College of Life Sciences um, here at BYU. We're so happy you decided to join us at this amazing university. Um, we've compiled some helpful information um, and resources that we think will really help you succeed here at BYU. I, I guess um, kind of what we wanted to start out is just tell us or tell you guys exactly what we do in the Life Science Advisement Center. So we're gonna go through and, and kind of introduce the advisors, what the advisors talk about and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so at the Life Sciences Advisement Center, we can help with so many aspects of your academic experience. So for example, we help with major explorations. If you're looking into a major and you wanna learn more about it from an expert, contact us. Um, if you have any transfer questions for all you transfer students, um, any major requirements, so sorting out all the many things you have to do in order to graduate, uh, class planning, uh, make sure you schedule these ahead of time because we do get really, really busy around registration weeks so this week and the first week of classes. Um, plans after graduation, we have life science specific career advisors that would love to help you find ways to apply your degree. Um, any graduation questions you might have, GE questions, how to best fulfill all the university graduation requirements, and so much more. Um, so we have eight great life sciences advisors in our, um, with us, and Dr. Breakwell, Don Breakwell, helps you with changing majors, but he can also help you put together basic class planning. Um, Ferris Child, who's with us today, helps students in exercise and wellness and exercise and science um, with integrated master's and athletic training program. He also helps with just general situations like double majors, over hour petitions, and over hour major changes. Uh, Lisa is one of our biology advisors. She helps students in the micro and molecular biology department as well, and all NDFS students. And then Beth Lichty is not housed directly in the Life Science Advisement Center, but she advises for almost all the public health embassies. Yeah, and then next we have Carol. She advises for exercise and wellness, exercise science, public health, um, neuroscience, and cell. Uh, Monica Eastman, she advises for exercise science, uh, cell biology, and plant and wildlife sciences. Um, Daniel, he advises for exercise science, uh, neuroscience, and plant and wildlife sciences. And then Nicole Cuthbert advises for the biology department, so that's biology, bioinformatics, biological science education, and then biodiversity and conservation. Yeah, and so you can always find our contact information at lsa.byu.edu, and if you ever forget, that's LSA as in Life Sciences Advisement. BYU.edu, just so you remember. So we would love to help you with your BYU life sciences experience, experience. So just reach out to us if you have any questions and you can find all of our contact information on our website. Sorry. I'll pause for like one second if you want to take a picture of this, mm -hmm. um, but all this is online as well. All right. Okay, so this is what our website looks like. You can find answers to so many questions here. Um, I really encourage you to become familiar with this website. It holds so much information um, on things like campus resources, scholarships, um, deadlines, general advisement info, internships, things like that. Um, it also uh, shows you, if you go down here, um, you can chat with one of us in this little bubble down at the bottom. And it's actually us, it's not a robot. So we can actually <laughs> answer your questions. Uh, next thing we wanted to talk about is mentored research. Um, so students can participate in different research um, topics with professors. Um, there's a hundred different research labs here at BYU and so we wanted to show you like on the website if you are at that top tab and you see that little red circle when you click on experiential learning it says mentored research and it'll show you a little bit about you know what is mentored research all that sort of stuff um, then you can scroll to the bottom of the page and you can see um, different departments so depending on what department you are you click on that department like it says on the screen there and then once you find your department it'll show you a list of professors um, so we're going to show you an example of a professor, Byron Adams. Um, so his, so some professors require like prerequisite classes, um, stuff like that. He specifically only requires, I think, it, what does it say, a, a love of science and a declared biology major. So each professor kind of has their own different prereqs that you need to fulfill. And so once you find one that you think you like, you can, you know, click on the professor you can see their contact information. You can read some of their research yourself. Um, and yeah, this website will help you figure out different mentor research opportunities. 
Yeah, so internships are another really awesome experiential learning opportunity that you can find at lsa.byu.edu. So again, if you click on the experiential learning tab, then click on internships, you're then taken to our internships web page. And on this web page, you can find information about specifically our LifeSci 199R internship. And that counts for up to three credits per semester. And so these are internships that can be added by any life science students. Um, and if you're interested, but if you're interested in a major specific internship, just go ahead and contact your, your individual major department. But if we scroll to the bottom of the page, then you'll find information on how to apply for and register for um, a LifeSide 199R internship. And then it, you can also find information about the current internships offered or internships from student, students in the past to find inspiration. Um, BYU offers all students the opportunity to enroll in the honors program. Um, the central focus of this program is the interdisciplinary study of big or great questions and coursework, like research, writing, hands-on experience. Um, this program is also open enrollment, meaning that all students are invited to join it. Um, uh, joining honors is a great way to broaden and deepen your horizons and your educational experience. Um, lots of the GE requirements are fulfilled by classes that are offered in the honors program. Yeah, so next we wanted to take a minute to give you some class recommendations for your first semester. So, you know, we know that it's kind of uh, an interesting transition going from high school to college. So we wanted to give you some advice on uh, classes that our advisors and us have thought, you know, would be good for first year students to take. Yeah, and um, pull out your phones, take pictures of these if you think it'll be useful. We think it'll be useful. <laughs> Um, so no matter what your major is within the College of Life Sciences, we highly recommend taking Life Sci 101, especially your first semester. So this is just a one credit, low pressure lecture series class um, that just goes over campus and college resources and gives you a look into each of the different life science majors and just helps you decide which one is right for you. So again, this is one of the best classes for you to be taking your first semester, especially if you're uncertain or undecided on your current major. Um, so we'll start sharing some of the like more major specific classes we recommend you taking your first semester. Um, for bio majors, we recommend taking Bio 130 and Chem 105. Yeah, and then for biodiversity and conservation, bioinformatics, and biological science education, we recommend Biology 130. And then for environmental science majors, we recommend taking PWS 155. 282 and 283. And then you can also kind of take PWS 150 and 180. Those are also good exploratory classes. Um, for exercise science majors, genetics, genomics, and biotech majors, molecular bio and microbiology majors, we recommend taking either Cell 120 or MM Bio 120 in addition to Chem 105. Um, additionally, exercise science 221 is an exploratory class if you're not really sure about exercise science. Um, and also fulfills a social science GE. Um, also, PWS 188 is a good one credit intro class that's just available in the winter. Yeah, and for food science, um, we recommend taking NDFS 100, uh, 191, and Chem 105. So for neuroscience majors and cell biology and physiology majors, we recommend taking Chem 105 and Cell 120. Um, for pre-MLS majors, that's uh, molecular laboratory sciences, uh, we recommend taking MMBio 102, MMBio 121, and Chem 105. Um, for public health, uh, all the different emphases, um, we recommend taking uh, Health 210. And then for public health, specifically public health epidemiology majors, we recommend taking Health 210 and Stat 121 in your first semester. Um, for public health health science majors, we recommend taking either Health 210, Cell 120, or MMBio 121, all in addition to Chem 105. And then for pre-dietetics, NDFS 100, and either Chem 101 or Chem 105. And then for exercise and wellness majors, we recommend taking NDFS 100. And for nutri nutritional science majors, we recommend taking NDFS 100, Cell 120, and Chem 105. Um, for plant and landscape systems majors, we recommend taking PWS 100, PWS 103, 181, and then Chem 101. And then if you're undecided on what major you're looking at, um, in addition to that um, one credit lecture series class we touched on earlier, some good um, classes you could take instead are Cell 120 or MMBio 121 or Bio 130. And Chem 105, pretty much every major requires Chem 105 at some point. So not a bad idea to get that out of the way. Um, another GE for freshmen is 
you have to take writing 150 in your first um, year on campus. And so we would recommend, you know, you just knock that out your first semester. Also religion classes, can't go wrong with religion classes. So that's always a good fallback as well. So at BYU, you're required to complete 120 total credit hours before you graduate. So what this means is you're going to be taking some elective classes along the way. And the good news is we have so many great elective courses here at BYU. And these are some of our own personal recommendations. So first of all, Student Development 109 is just one of the best elective take classes to be taking as a freshman because it provides you with excellent academic skills like time management, memorization, effective reading, note-taking, and test preparation. So SWELL classes or student wellness classes are electives that teach introductory activities. That's what the website says, but it's just like fun activities like basketball, soccer, yoga, even scuba diving, just super fun classes. And they're half credit and they're just a really great way to break up a lecture heavy school day. Um, and then EXDM 223R is a set of classes that teaches different outdoor skills like fly fishing, backpacking, sailing, stuff like that. Really, really cool. Um, SFL 260 is a great way to learn more about finances. It's family finances, so just adult skills that you will be using. Um, and then also non-transfer students are required to take six hours of religion electives. Um, and many transfer students are also required to take a certain amount of religion electives. Um, so one of the most popular ones here on campus is religion C351, which is world religions. Just kind of learning about different religions. It's really, really interesting. And it just kind of broadens your horizon in that, in that way. Um, SFL 210, basic food prep course, if you're sick of eating ramen. Um, and then there are also lots of beginning dance classes and just art classes in general here at BYU and dance 180 and Music 117 are both really fun, artsy classes. All right, I'm worth about registering for classes, which I'm sure a lot of you are figuring out right now. Um, <laughs> there are two main ways that you can do it. The first way is through um, the catalog. It's catalog.buau.edu. If you want to search the classes that you're wanting to take in the search bar um, right here, um, then you'll find some basic information on that class. Um, and here we're looking at Bio 130. You can then click on the semester in which you would like to take the class and you'll be taken to a page where you can see all the available times um, when it's taught and the different professors that are teaching it. Um, if we scroll to the top of this page and then click on the view my map to register, uh, it's right here. And then you'll be taken to a screen for where you can register for your classes. You can add it to your cart if it's before the registration date, um, before it opens. And if the registration has already started, then you can just add it straight to your schedule. Yeah, so the other way to register for classes is through my map. And so this is what your my map homepage look like. Um, we blurred out like the student information. Um, but if you click on the register tab, um, you'll go to the overview of like your next couple semesters. So you pick which semester you're looking at a class, you click add a class. Um, then you fill out the department once we get the you want to click. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So once you get to here, then you fill out the department and then you fill out which exact class you want to take. And then it shows you all the different times, all the different professors. Then you click which one you want. You click add and then it adds the class. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, so the next part of this PowerPoint, we just want to kind of go over some general bits of college advice, as well as some BYU resources that can really help you succeed. Okay, um, just for general academic advice, don't take too many credits your first semester. We know you're excited, but it's okay. <laughs> do it. <laughs> um, as a freshman, you're still figuring out the best way to juggle your new schedule um, and these new responsibilities. Um, as great as high school was, college is a really different ballgame and it's going to be a lot different than you expect. Um, taking too many classes can overwhelm and frustrate you. And over time, you'll figure out a course that works best for you. Um, take a variety of classes. Um, try to never just take science classes. We know this is a life sciences college. We know you're looking into science but you will get major burnout if you only take science classes. Um, keep things fresh and exciting, take a variety of courses. Um, we give you a lot of good examples of um, fun, like swell classes, and it's a good way to break up that stuff. Um, try to make friends in each of your classes. I know it sounds easier said than done, um, but just talk to the people that are sitting next to you. The first day of class, especially freshman classes, nobody knows anyone anyway. Um, and having a buddy in class will make you more likely to go to class. And if you ever do miss a day, you can get notes from someone you've studied, studied with. It's a really good resource. Um, there are so many great campus resources. Uh, don't miss out on them. Reach out to your TAs. 
I am not a TA, but all my friends at RTA say that they have so many empty office hours because people are scared to come and talk to them. And they're also just students. They want to help you. It's okay. Uh, so utilize those office hours. Um, we have something called the BYU Writing Lab, um, which is where you can go and you have um, other students who can help review your papers and they'll help um, you grade them before you turn them in. That way you can try to get better grades. Um, and we have a lot of other academic support offices that we can talk about in a little bit. Uh, be healthy. Do not overwhelm yourself doing homework. Make sure to get enough to sleep. Take breaks when you're doing homework. Stay mentally sharp. Eat healthy. Um, make sure you eat those fruits and veggies. I know that ramen is cheap and that <laughs> you're finally on your own. So you probably think you can eat ice cream every day. You can't afford it and your stomach will hurt. So just uh, make good healthy choices. Um, it might seem unconnected to your academic success, but it's really not. Um, finally, don't wait until the last minute to study. This is hard, but it's really important. <laughs> University tests um, are normally a lot harder and a lot more different than you might be expecting from high school tests. Um, so take time to study for your different classes every day. Even if it's just 10 minutes, it's better than nothing. Um, and then you'll be on track to do well in your next, next tests. Yeah, so for class planning advice, our biggest point is meet with your professor, or not your professor, your advisor. <laughs> <laughs> their advisors are literally paid to help you plan classes. So they're a great resource. This is their job. They know what they're doing. They can really help you figure out different classes that you want to take. You know, you can tell them your what you want to do eventually after, you know, you graduate and they can help you find the right major, the right classes to help prepare you for that. Um, your progress report that shows you like all the different classes you've taken, all the classes you need to take. And it shows you, you know, the gaps that you need to fill in before you can graduate and all that stuff. Um, and then third, the catalog, we kind of already touched about this, but this kind of has just the list of all the classes you can take. And so you can, you know, you can spend a couple minutes just looking through all the classes that are on there, see what catches your eye and then all that stuff. Yeah. For meeting with your advisors, we had that those um, resources earlier, like the phone number and our chat function. Try not to email us. We don't set up appointments over email. Um, it's just too hard to go back and forth via email. Where if you just come in to talk to us or call us, we can get it done really fast. Or chat. Or chat and with us. All of our contact information is on our website, lsa.byu.edu. Don't forget it. <laughs> okay, so ratemyprofessor.com is also a really good site to use when signing up for classes, but it is not an official BYU website, so we can't promise that it's always going to be accurate or always going to be great. There's always some like weird ads on the side of the page, but it is a really good way to get a, a general feel for specific professors from students who have already taken the class. Just make sure you read through all the comments though, because people have different opinions. So you can see overall ratings as well as individual student ratings and reviews. And yeah, as you can see, they had different opinions on the exact same professor, exact same class. Just make sure to read through them all. Okay, um, <clears throat> there are a lot of great campus resources. Um, so I'm just gonna go through a couple of them. Uh, there's the women's resources, which is not just for women, it's just um, specifically catered with some more women-based needs, um, but they have really great services such as dietary counseling for yoga, um, really awesome stuff. Um, we have the Multicultural Student Services, which has a lot of great resources for mentoring and assisting multicultural students in their college experience. We also have the International Student Services, which supports and advises international students. Um, CAPS is our on-service counseling service. Unfortunately, a lot of um, university students have some mental health concerns. Um, and CAPS offers free counseling from certified professionals to all BYU students. On um, the website, caps.byu.edu has um, a lot of handouts as well. Um, I will say for CAPS, a lot of people realize that they're really stressed out right towards finals. And so right towards finals, they're completely booked. So try to um, schedule appointments earlier in the semester, even if you're not sure if you're gonna need it quite yet. Um, once you get your first appointment with CAPS, you have seven appointments and you are already in their queue instead of having to wait um, you'll be ahead of everyone who hasn't had their first appointment yet. Um, the University Accessibility Center helps students with physical and mental um, struggles that um, they help them navigate their college life. They'll help you work with your professor. That way you can get um, accommodations if you need them. BYU's Financial Fitness Center is a great way to receive some financial advisement on all of your new adult responsibilities and costs. <laughs> um, all freshmen at BYU are also assigned a first year mentor. I'm not sure if you guys would have gotten that email yet, but hopefully you will soon. Um, and they can help give you tailored advice on how to thrive during your first year at BYU. Um, there, there's um, student development classes, which aid students in having personal development. And they can be great electives. They can help break up your science classes. Um, they're just like a really good lifelong resource. Um, then the BYU app. The BYU app is so awesome. It's been updated the um, past couple of years, so it's a lot better now. Um, it has amazing new features, and they come up with new features like every couple months. Um, and that's including, but not limited to, 
where to find the next class, where the closest bathroom is, where the closest vending machines are, um, seeing how much money you have left on your cougar cash, um, event calendars, your rock pass for your sports games, and a lot of other stuff. So make sure to check it out. You can order food on it. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Um, okay, some academic resources. The Life Sciences Learning Center, it's just like an office right next to ours, and it just has different um, study rooms dedicated to different classes, so like Bio 130, and then Bio 121, or 120, and then Bio 240, so 120, and all those other classes. You can go in there, they have study rooms, and they have tutors as well that can kind of help you with different questions. Pre-professional advisement centers, so this is, you know, if after school you're planning on med school or PA school, anything like that then they can help you um, make sure you're prepared for that, make sure you're on the right track and, and all that stuff. Uh, the Writing Center, I think we touched on this a little bit earlier, but this is literally, so you're writing a paper for a class, you want someone to look over it for you, you take it to the Writing Center, they'll look over it for you, give you some tips, some edits, they, they even do a little bit of research for you. It's really sick, take advantage of that one. Um, why serve tutors? Um, free tutoring for specific BYU classes, uh, you can find a tutor and sign up yourself if you wanna offer your services to, to other students. Um, career services, we have a few of those advisors here in our office, but they kind of help you figure out, you know, what you wanna do with your degree, different avenues you can take, stuff like that. Um, major maps, that just kind of shows you different classes that, um, well, usually when you have a major map, it'll show you a four-year plan. And so you can take that and use that yourself, or you can use it as a guideline for what you wanna do and adjust it however you want. Um, book drop, it's a way to sell old textbook. The bookstore also can buy back old textbooks. They're definitely a little bit more stingy in my personal experience. So they're usually not the best, but the bookstore is also an option. Um, going off that, the BYU book list, I think at this point, if you guys have already registered for your classes, it will show you the books that you're gonna need for fall semester. Um, also word of advice, the bookstore does not have the best prices, probably like 90% of the time. So don't just like go in and buy the books that the bookstore, you know, has in your cart. Look for them on Amazon, mm -hmm. look for them on Google. Yes, but be careful because some of your classes will require those pages in the back of the book. Like you like rip them editions. out and turn them in. So make sure you're looking at the book list and checking your syllabuses before you um, yeah. buy like yeah buy the right the ones yeah <laughs> yeah um, Kennedy Center this is for like study abroad so if you want more information on study abroads or like information on final or financial aid for that stuff that's where you'll go class labs so this is like I guess last semester I was in a finance class and so they have a huge you know lab where they have a bunch of TAs for finance and so you go in there they have a bunch of TAs that can help you super convenient for if you're struggling with just like a little question that you need a little bit of help with or homework, stuff like that. And then lastly, us, LSA, Life Science Advisement, we can help you with everything. So feel free to call us, send us a chat, answer your questions. Yeah, um, so if you're looking for a really good job near your classes that works around your schedule, go to yjobs.byu.edu. And so you, here you can look up um, hourly wages, jobs by category, weekly schedules, and so much more. Um, and there are so, so many on-campus jobs available, especially right now. Um, and many of them offer competitive rates. So just click on the student tab and you'll find a long list of part-time job opportunities. I mean, we all found this job at yjobs.byu.edu, so it works. We can attest, it's a great place to look. All right, um, student life is a huge part of your BYU experience. You don't wanna be in your dorm every single day. Um, there's really great opportunities to getting out, um, making new friends. Uh, first, there are so many clubs um, at BYU. Um, I'm pretty sure there's even a juggling club if that's what you're into. There's a ton of stuff. Um, you can find the information at clubs.uau.edu. In the Wilk, there's club nights every Tuesday. You don't have to be a part of that club to go um, and hang out with them and see what they're doing. It's seven to nine on Tuesdays. The Rock Pass. The Rock Pass is great. It's a year-long athletic pass that gets you into any BYU sporting event. Um, Tyler and I have a disagreement. I think volleyball games are better and he likes football <laughs> games better. Um, you on that yes. <laughs> Um, but it's a great way to support our teams. And normally, I think you were saying like football yeah, games. It pays for itself. Yeah. It's 150 Seriously. bucks. It's going to cost you $60 to go to the football game and get a nosebleed. And so that's yeah. three games pays for itself. You yeah, also get so a ton well. of free stuff for almost any game you go to, like T-shirts. Usually at football game, they have like a tailgate with free food. 
that you get in with a rock pass. So it's, it's super worth it. But yeah, I can't like vouch for the rock pass enough. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, on the other end, we also offer a spiritual strengthening um, education here at BYU. Um, we hold weekly devotionals and forums at the Marriott Center every Tuesday at 11. That's for all the semesters. So they're going on during spring, summer as well. Um, campus offices are all closed and you will not have classes offered at Tuesdays at 11. Um, that way you have an opportunity to attend. Um, it's a great break from classes, a little way to receive a spiritual boost. Um, then we have the YSERV office. It's yserv.byu.edu. Um, it's located in the Wilk and it houses so many service opportunities. There's a lot of um, fun and unique programs you can take part in. Uh, make sure to check out their website. They also have just in their office, sometimes just running projects. Um, one time last year, I walked in and just like helped knit a hat and then left. So anytime you just like want to do a little bit of service, um, they have stuff in there. Um, take part in BYU intramurals. Uh, pick and sign up for sport at intramurals.byu.edu. This is a great way to take place in low pressure, but fun sports competitions. Um, and then hiking, BYU is located in our beautiful Utah Valley. Uh, as such, there are so many fun hikes to do on the weekends, especially um, the Y. It's, um, I actually, I'm a senior. I still haven't done it. I need to, I need to do it it's um, kind before of intense, I graduate. But you have to do it once. Yeah. Yeah, I have to do it before I graduate. It's supposed you to be really, really pretty up there. Um, also, BYU offers top tier performance groups and that perform regularly. Sheridan just got back from performance, actually. Um, you can find all sorts of shows, uh, music shows, dance performances, plays, lots of different stuff. Arts.byu.edu is where you can find those. They're normally pretty cheap um, to make them accessible for students. Um, also, food. There are so many uh, great restaurants near uh, BYU, and we do have the food. Uh, oh, what's it called? Cougary? The Cougary. We have the Cougary on campus in the Wilk with lots of restaurants. Um, there's a smorgasbord of options in Provo. Um, let's see, Outdoors Unlimited, that is a BYU program that rents and repairs outdoor equipment at low rates and also holds outdoor activities and challenges. And you can find them at outdoors.byu.edu. We also fix bikes. If you mm -hmm. bike to campus a little? Yes. Yeah. And if you want to go and hike or uh, camp up in our mountain range, they offer a lot of stuff for that. So you don't need to come to Provo with a tent. Awesome. All right. So that's all the all the dedicated material we have for you. We wanted to just take this next like half hour or so and just open it up for questions. So that can be questions for us, like, you know, classes we've taken or different like personal recommendations, like our favorite intramural stuff like that, or it could be more academic based questions. We got our advisor Ferris on and he can help answer maybe some more specific questions you might have. But yeah, we'll open it up for questions now. Anyone can just either unmute yourself or just throw it in the chat. Um, we're getting paid to be here, so please give us something to do. <laughs> Hi, um, so I was just wondering, does each student have a specific registration time or is it just like general, it lets all the freshmen go at once? Um, so it depends on how many credits you have. Um, so if you're coming, so like my registration as a senior, my registration was already like two days ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then I don't think most registration for freshmen is until the end, like this weekend or next week. Mm -hmm. um, if you're coming into BYU with more credits, like from AP classes, or if you took any um, like dual enrollment classes, then you might have an earlier date. It should say that on your, my BYU on your register tab, it'll tell you when you can register. Okay, sweet. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, concurrent enrollment AP classes. So there's a website, actually, if you just like Google BYU AP classes, there's like a whole chart of all of the AP classes that transfer over, all the IB classes that transfer over. And you can also look up the BYU transfer equivalency search for um, any like community college courses you took in high school or concurrent enrollment. You can also go to your mind map. Um, go to the progress report tab and you can look under your academic summary and it shows all of the credits that have transferred over from AP courses, transfer universities, IB classes, whatever it is. So I have some AP classes listed on there from before I came to BYU and I can find it all there. Um, are you able to register before registration? No. Um, your cart might say, um, like your cart might go through at 6 p.m. the night before. But um, if it says you register on the 13th, you can't register on the 11th, it won't let you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but your cart, you can add classes nice. to your cart whenever. 
So like you could add that like tonight and then whenever your cart gets processed, like either uh, whenever it is like either like Saturday or next week or something, it'll go through. And if that class has a seat in it, it'll put you in and it'll register for you. But you can't yeah. then like change anything until your register date. Yeah. And it's the nice thing about that is you don't have to like wake up at midnight and like frantically try and add your classes while they're all the seats are dropping away. It makes it a lot less stressful. Yeah. Um, so that kind of goes into the next question. Um, it should say submitted. So if, once you click the submit button, you can still edit the class. I would double check that it still says submitted. But um, when you go into like the button that says my cart, then it will have a button that says submit now or just mm -hmm. submit and you click that. And you're good yeah, and I think once you mm -hmm. submit it to, if you go back in, it has like a little thing at the top. I want to say like at the top on right, it says like submit. Yeah. So yeah, that's another way to check. Yeah. If I can interject for just a second here to comment on two of these things. So transfer.byu.edu, that's as as uh, Shaded and uh, Sheridan and Tyler were saying, that has all transfer AP information right there. And then as they're also saying, definite plug to, to submit registration cards. You're more likely to get into your classes if you use the registration cards and submit. Um, versus if you don't, um, because they process sooner than when you can actually register. So please use those registration cards and make sure, as they're saying, to submit your cards um, to increase your chances of getting into classes. And again, you want to submit those by 6 p.m. the day before. Yeah. Um, we can also answer questions about just like UU yeah. culture, yeah. Life Cougary, <laughs> our classes. Well, my favorite thing is totally yeah. <laughs> anything really. <laughs> also, I'm just going to do another shameless plug for the website. <laughs> it's so good. Um, backup classes in case you don't get in. Okay. Um, so there's the oh, um. There's the wait list. So, I mean, I would always click that little button that says, yes, I want to be added to the wait list. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as backup classes. I like to have one or two just because if it's not added and I know like I'm only taking 12 credits and I'm worried about not getting added into one of the classes, I want to make sure that even before classes start, I'm at 12 credits. So I get charged for a full-time student. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's also easier to like, if you register for more than you're going to take, it's easier to just drop a class, yeah. you know, say like two days before school starts than to try to get into a class that you wish you could have. Mm -hmm. So I think That's usually so err on that side of like, just if you're thinking about it, just register for it. You can always drop it. Mm -hmm. There's no like problem at all with that. It's no, but you can't register for more than 18. Right? Yeah. So yes. it won't let you register more than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Another thing you can do is just like the day before check to see how many seats are left in each, each of the classes that mm -hmm. you're wanting to add. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the wait list goes to so someone else, like, do you get automatically enrolled on your registration date? Yes and no. If there's seats available, then you'll be automatically registered if it's already in your cart and your cart is submitted. If your cart isn't submitted, it doesn't know what you want and it won't do anything. So make sure you've submitted your cart um, if the class is full, like if there's 100 students and 100 seats filled, um, then you'll be put on the wait list and it'll tell you like what spot you are on the wait list as long as you click that little button saying, yes, I want to be added. Um, so, I mean, if it's a class of 100 and there's a 40 person wait list, you're probably not going to get in. But if you're number two on the wait list, you probably will. You'll be just fine. Yeah. You're number two. Out of the life sciences majors, are there any that require an application to get into? Yes. Yes. And Sheridan has those for us. So first of all, the medical laboratory sciences, as you saw, you can only like apply to get a pre-MLS right now. You do have to apply for that one. You have to apply for biological science education. Do you have to apply for that one? Or do you just need to think so? Ferris, you can, you, <laughs> can you remind yeah. us? You do need to apply for that one, yep. Okay. okay, I think that's all education majors you have to apply for. Yes. And then you also have to apply to get into dietetics. And I think that's it, right, Ferris? If you're interested in athletic training and doing the integrated mas bachelor's, master's in athletic training, you need to apply for that too. Mm -hmm. so. That's a really good but, that, but most of our majors and 90% of the students in our majors are in majors that you don't have to apply for. So, yeah. Um, how many credits would we recommend taking your first semester? 12 to 14. 12 yeah, to 14. I, I probably wouldn't go over 14, 14. just yeah. from experience. Mm -hmm. Like 12 to 14 is about, I feel like that's a pretty normal, mm -hmm. regular course. Yeah. So that's about what everybody else does. Yeah. So you can't take more than 18 credits mm -hmm. unless um, you petition. Unless right. you petition for extra. 
um, which is Ferris, who's in our chat, is who you would ask if you wanted to petition. Um, but don't do it. Your don't do it. It's, don't it's do a lot it. of work. <laughs> I, I don't allow any freshman students to take more than 18 <laughs> credits. Uh, if you would like to talk through that, though, and you, if you can share with me how that could be helpful, if that's an interest to you, then I'd be happy to talk to you. But it's extremely rare, if ever, that I do that. So um, once you've had a chance to experience BYU and the classes and the rigor, and then if that's something you're wanting to look into, I'd be happy to talk through you, talk to, talk to you about that. So it's not uncommon for some of our seniors and juniors to take uh, more than 18 credits. Uh, but having said that, when I say not uncommon, maybe less than 1% of them are trying to take more than 18 credits. It's, it's in proportion, it's not that many that are, that are trying to take more than 18 credits. It's, they're just really busy. Yeah. Um, and to that end, we, um, someone asked in our last info session, what credits really mean? Because a lot of high schools don't have credits. so. Um, we can go through that really fast. Yeah. yeah, so basically one credit hour equates to two to three hours of outside work. So you can kind of do that math in your head based on how many credits you're taking. It's not always 100% accurate, but it's it's pretty pretty spot on. And, you know, he was saying in the, Tyler was saying in our last meeting as well, it kind of sometimes does equate to like three hours, typically means three hours in class as well. So like three one hour classes or two one and a half hour classes it's not always the case like with swell classes it's like a half hour for classes but you just show up to class and that's it you don't really do any homework it just kind of depends on how the course is set up but for the most part that's what it is yeah okay favorite thing about BYU man there's so many good things <laughs> um I mean like we did touch on sports I'm a big sports guy so like that's something I really like about BYU I love the food here in Provo too. Yeah. There's so many good restaurants. There's so many good restaurants. If anyone needs any, oh. that can be a question you ask in. But it's like but, a homemade popsicle scent right across the street. Yeah. From the I'm so, so excited to try. So many good food places. I think too. I guess for something a little bit that we haven't touched on. I'm from Ohio, so like growing up, never really had a bunch of like members in like my high school class and stuff. So it's been pretty cool to be able to like come out here to Utah and to Provo and BYU and just like have that like sense of community with like everybody else it's like you know everybody else goes to church here you know in classes you say an opening prayer sometimes you know for like a biology class which is just like really cool I don't know it's mm -hmm. like something that's super unique about BYU and there's pictures of Christ in the testing center I find it very encouraging <laughs> when I'm like 70 questions in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> keeps me motivated yeah. I think one of my favorite things about BYU is just the campus is so beautiful. It is. They always have flowers. They really out, do. Yeah. And there's so many beautiful trees, so many great grassy areas to take a nap or just eat lunch and have a picnic. It's just so, so beautiful. And right next to the life sciences, there's just this nature path you can walk through. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And the, the mountains are just like right there. They're so pretty winter and fall and just like all the seasons. They're just gorgeous. Right now they're all green and happy and I love it. I also, my personal favorite part of being at BYU is being a part of the BYU choirs. I know that doesn't apply to everyone, but there are BYU performing groups, non-audition and audition that you can join. You don't have to be like a music major or a dance major or whatever. They're really fun. I like them. Um, my favorite part is I mean, it sounds weird to say like my major because that's like my <laughs> whole life. Um, maybe my research, I do research for the food science department. Um, I get to eat a lot of my research um, and I just really like it. Uh, shameless plug for food science. It's a pretty small <laughs> major. It's in our college um, and you get to eat in almost every class. And I just think it's really awesome. I love my major. <laughs> okay, um, student jobs. Yes, you can um, wait until the school year has started. You're less likely to, I mean, they're it's a lot to easier up. to get yeah. a job like maybe two or three weeks before the mm -hmm. semester starts versus mm -hmm. like two yeah. or three weeks after. Everyone's trying to get a job yeah. the first week of classes. What I will say though is that you can find all sorts of different kinds of jobs. So if you really want like a low pressure, easy into college, like maybe like five to 10 hours a week job, they have those on there, but they also have like 20 hour a week jobs if you're feeling super confident. So it's just mm. what you want. Yeah, you can't take more than 20 hours at BYU during um, fall, winter, during spring, summer, you can take more than that. Um, but it doesn't matter like if like my research job and this job combined, I still can't take more than 20 hours. Um, it counts all of it, even though like my pay is different for the different jobs. Um, as for like how flexible they are, it really depends. Um, 
it depends on the office. I know that like the BYU bookstore, a lot of people really want to work at because you get your books like half off, but Mm -hmm. they're really strict about like what blocks you work versus here. um, We're a lot more flexible with our classes. So it really just depends on where you're working. Mm -hmm. Um, Janitorial staff, which everyone's kind of like, ah, but some people really like, like, you did it. You really liked it. I did it for two years. I met my husband there. So I really, really like that. Um, but I, they, they have early morning custodial that pays a lot. And there's a lot of signing bonuses right now because they're really low on custodial. Um, I think it's a great way to get work out of your way before starting your school day. You do have to wake up really early, but there's yeah. also other custodial jobs in the nighttime during the day where you can pick your more, own hours a bit more. There's just whatever you want. You can probably find a job that works for you. Yeah. And you could go on the website, like pretty much right now and there's jobs for fall semester so I Do it don't think it would be a bad idea to just take a look at it and maybe see if you can get something set up for fall semester because that'd be really convenient um, as we're as we're talking jobs really fast and as you're think, if any of you are thinking about working may I recommend at least for your first semester 10 to 15 hours a week um, or less that's about ideal for your first for your first semester but don't yeah if you're working off campus or if you want to find a job off campus, great, but still 10 to 15 hours a week is, is where you want to be with your hours is what's recommended. Mm-hmm. National studies recommendations. So. <laughs> um, yes, we are recording this. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be posted or if we're just going to send out another mass email, but it is being recorded. Um, favorite hikes? I have an app. Oh, yeah, has an app. All trails. All trails. Yeah, yeah, there's an app. It's really clutch. I don't have it, but I I hear a lot about it. (laughs) I did, um, I don't know, Battle Creek Falls. You guys heard that one? I think I've heard about that one. I think I did that one like a month ago. It was really cool. I mean, you have to hike the Y at some point. Like, you you just have to. It's a really cool view. It is like pretty much straight uphill. It's just set back after something. Yeah. So that does kind of stink, but (laughs) it's a really cool view. There's tons of them. And then, yeah, Sheridan, you can tell us about the app. So the All Trails app. (laughs) Not directly sponsored by BYU at all. So Just by Sheridan. Just by me. (laughs) You can find, like, if there's easy, like, a moderate or hard hike, you can see, like, how long it is, how high you go up, how long it's estimated to take, pictures, reviews, stuff like that. If you're super into hiking, I recommend that app. Mm -hmm. Um, I have done the Mount Timpanogos hike. That hike is, I mean, for me, it was brutal. It's like seven miles up, I think, and seven miles down. I did the sunrise hike, so we left at like 2 a.m. Really, really pretty. I will never do it again, but (laughs) worth it once. Um, 12 or more credit hours is full-time in the fall and winter. Mm -hmm. For spring, summer, I think it's six. It's just half because it's technically a term for spring and a term for summer. Um, Favorite club we've been to? Swing dance. Swing dance is fun. Swing dance. I love it. And there's also country swing dance and Latin dance and just any kind of dance. There's K-pop dance where you like (laughs) learn, like you actually learn what they're doing in the music videos. And it's really good. I I see them perform and I'm very impressed. (laughs) Um, I like, I don't do too many clubs. I do a ton of intramurals. Like I'll do like two or three a semester. Usually my favorite intramural is inner tube water polo. (laughs) <laughs> it's about as awesome as it sounds That's you're so in the pool in an inner tube you can only swim by like paddling your arms like this it's super <laughs> fun nobody's good at it so it's super <laughs> fun to just like mess around with your friends in it so I would probably like intramurals is like my favorite club that I've done uh but I've just like I'm not I'm in like the women in science club I'm in that one I'm in the food science club which is great because um they just give us food and then we have normally they have info <laughs> sessions and then they give us chick-fil-a or something so that's really great um sometimes i go to the, just the game night um oh, like during club night in the, the world they have just like tables and tables mm-hmm. of board games and stuff that's those fun. are really really fun you can get so those. much free stuff from clubs too. so much like free food dinner yeah. you, you can find a club probably every night and get free dinner if you really want to if you really look for it you if can. you really, yeah. i actually decided my major because i went to an event just for the free food <laughs> <laughs> Um, when clubs such as Chem 105 have three lab hours, what are those and how do those work? Um, so, I'm not a science I'm person. Science either. Yeah, so, <laughs> so there's a difference between lab hours and lecture hours. Lecture hours is when you're like sitting down and the professor is just talking to you. Um, lab hours is normally you're in either like a small group or you're in an actual lab and you're doing experiments or doing work like that. Um, so that's basically it. 
Um, you're serving a mission before you enter BYU and you're not starting until the winter of 20. I've, I've responded to call. Oh, yeah, oh, Paris. Okay, perfect. Yeah, there's the response. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Okay. okay. Um, how the terms divide by year? My previous college had only fall and spring semester. Mm -hmm. Okay. So fall is what we're coming up on. It'll start in late August and right before Christmas break. So that's fall. And then right after that, some people call it spring, but it's we call it winter semester. So that's just like from January to middle of April. Mm -hmm. That's winter. And then in the summer, we have two terms um, split up. So we've got the spring for the first half that's just about to end here in a bit. And then summer for the second half. And then you start again in the fall. All right, that's everything we have in the chat so far. We still have 15 minutes. If you guys have more questions, throw them in there, or you can just unmute yourself and talk to us. Happy to answer questions. <laughs> I can just do another shameless plug for the website. <laughs> I'll do another plug for the rock pass. <laughs> okay, there we go. Get a rock pass. <laughs> um, favorite place to do homework? Oh, that's a very intimate question. Um, everybody has very specific places where they like do homework. Do not just end up in like the, the LSB or the library main floor. Um, this is really random. I did it. I haven't done it in a couple of years. In my sophomore year, there's a bathroom in the McKay room that has couches for a women's room, but no one's ever in there. Sometimes I would go in there and I would sit in that bathroom couch for a while. We have um, a bathroom couch in the Asian bag too. Yeah. So those are always good. Um, if there's a bathroom couch somewhere. It's a good study place. Um, I also like to study in the engineering floor, in the engineering building. I have a friend who's an engineering major, so I just go study with her. Um, I like that building. Yeah. No, I honestly like, so freshman year, I had like a dedicated spot in the the Iring Science Center. They had like a back hallway that just had a bunch of like armrest chairs with like cushiony backs and bottoms, and they were super comfortable. Then when I got home for my mission, it was gone. <laughs> Still haven't found a new spot yet. So I kind of rotate between the library and then just like finding an empty classroom. Mm -hmm. So and I'm still in the market for a new spot as well. <laughs> I really love the JFSB. You can go to like one of the top floors. There's always couches and chairs available and it's a really pretty view too. And also when you want a lunch break, you can just like go to the main floor, go outside. They have this like amazing little like quad area with grass and trees and it just like makes you feel like you're in a forest <laughs> and I love it. Um, also, I live in HVAC and they've got a lot of practice rooms there if you ever need a place to play the piano or practice your singing or your trombone or whatever. Um, music majors do get to reserve them, but if you wait till like 10 minutes after the hour, you can just claim it. Um, do you sign up for intramurals before the semester starts or after? It's like, it's kind of soon after the semester starts. So yeah, you want to like sign up like right, like right at the beginning of the semester. Um, I think someone else asked what intramural I would not recommend. <laughs> I've liked them all. I will say I did basketball freshman year and like, I'm not awful at basketball and neither were any of my roommates. We were the worst team in the league by a lot. Like they ranked every, they rank everybody for the tournament and we were the worst. So basketball, I'd say it's very competitive. Who like the if basketball? You, yeah, if you no. don't want a very competitive intramural, I would stay away from basketball. <laughs> but I don't know if there's an intramural I wouldn't recommend. I okay. would say they're all- Frisbee is kind of intense They're all too. pretty It's fast. very popular here, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. inner tube water polo, best intramural <laughs> by a mile. It's super fun. Mm. They also have pickleball, which is yeah. super popular. Pickleball is really popular in Provo right now. So if you yeah. have you pickleball should, paddles, you should bring them. Yeah, mm -hmm. or get into pickleball now. So when you get here, you can make friends really easy. Yes. Yes. Um, can we call our chat with the advisor tomorrow to help set up schedule? Okay, so we might have availability. This is registration week. So it's one of our busiest weeks this week and next week. Um, you can call us or chat us and we can try to fit you in. But like we saw, um, we showed you guys earlier, the advisors have specific things that they help with. So your advisor um, for your specific major and your specific last name might not have an availability tomorrow, but call us um, during our business hours tomorrow and we will try to help you. <laughs> yeah, and our business hours are Monday to Friday, eight to five. You can't, well, like, you can't really call us after 4.45 because after a certain point, we have to start closing down the office, but yeah. happy to talk to you. Um, did any of us serve a mission? What tips would you have for future missionary? Mm. Uh, okay, so I went to Brazil after, so I did a year of school before I went. I would highly recommend that. 
it's probably too late for anyone on this call to like switch those plans, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what I did. I would recommend that. I went to Brazil and then after COVID hit, I finished my mission in Reno. Um, my biggest tip like in school to like prepare for a mission is make sure you have like good friends, like surround yourself with good people. Um, I think that does a lot for you also. I, had, I didn't ever take a mission prep class before I did. I think that is probably a good idea and it's not gonna make or break your mission if you take a mission prep class, but that definitely can help. It's and awesome. then I would just say like, also when you're here, try to be outgoing because that's gonna prepare, like on your mission, you have to be outgoing. So if you just practice that here, that'll prepare you as well. So, yeah. On the mission prep class here at BYU, it does count for one of your religion electives. So I did that for one of my religion electives when I was deciding whether or not I wanted to do it. I didn't decide to do it, um, but I still love that class. And I still am super happy that I took it, even though I didn't actually end up serving a mission. And it's just like a low, low pressure religion class. It's 100 level. So um, benefits of mentored courses. I am, I'm assuming you mentored research. Uh, mentored research. I don't know. I do mentored research. Did I do you? Okay. No. Um, so I'll address that. <laughs> I really love my mentored research. Um, basically, we kind of talked about it earlier, but it's kind of up to the professor. Look through the professors that you're interested in, and uh, like the department has them all listed out if they offer it. Some of them offer prereqs, um, so you might have to wait a couple of semesters, but some of them don't. And make sure that when you're doing it, you're looking for research that you're interested in, and then email the professor and say, "I see you did this study. I do you want any help? I would love to help." Um, for the life sciences majors, it looks really good on resumes for internships and future jobs if you can show that you've done research actively throughout your college career. Um, plus, it's just a really good way to see the way your field actually is before you've gotten into it. Um, so like I've done a couple of product development internships and then I do um, like food technology mentored research. So it's just good to see different ways um, to look at that. And in some of your departments, they'll let you do research with multiple professors. Um, so you can get a nice wide variety of it. Um, taking a bike. I, I don't have a bike. Do you have a bike? <laughs> I do. And I ride to campus every day. I think it's a good, like, it's a good idea as long as you are okay biking uphill. We live right next to the mountains. It is very hilly here. If you hate, hate, hate biking uphill, maybe not the best idea. But if you don't want to pay for car, car insurance, gas right now, and if you don't want to pay for a parking pass, Finding parking is a whole can of beans, whole can of worms, whatever the expression is. <laughs> so there are also um, buses. There are free shuttles, depending on some apartment complexes will have shuttles. That's I do that in the fall and winter, but in the spring, summer, I bike to campus. But it is definitely a yeah. beast. I would say, too, though, if you're living on campus, it, just walk. Yeah, it's like it's not really going to do too much because you already live on campus. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. really like not that far. It's like. 10 minute walk tops to campus. Nice. And so I, it's probably not worth it on campus because mm -hmm. then also you have the buses that can get you to like downtown Provo for free. Yeah. So we do get free bus passes as yeah. BYU and train. students and train. So you can go to Salt Lake for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, right. Also with the bikes, we're in uh, Utah. So we do get a lot of snow in the winter. So can I personally don't like to bike in the snow. So just yeah. keep that in mind. And for mm -hmm. bikes, you can't bike 10 minutes of passing period. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll have to walk during passing period anyway. So, But there are like plenty of bike racks on campus for wherever yeah. you're going, you can find a bike rack. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, if your registration is June 13th, um, to finalize your schedule, um, like we said earlier, have your cart submitted by 6 p.m. the night before, so on June 12th. And then don't touch it again until after midnight on June 13th, <laughs> because then it'll get all messed up um, and it won't let you move stuff around until that morning. Just then you can move stuff around. I have moved, I've changed classes, dropped classes, added classes during the add drop deadline, like when the semester's already started. So finalizing mm -hmm. your schedule really um, depends on if you like the classes mm -hmm. and you can move them around all the way up until the add drop deadline. Yeah, so like a week after that, yeah. school starts is like how long you have to like yeah. mess with your schedule, so. And even past then, if you just really hate a class and you don't think you're gonna pass it, you have the option to withdraw it, but it will show up on your transcript. So it's more of a big decision. So if you're just like, if you really wanna drop a class, but just just think about doing it before the ad drop deadline. Um, 
electric scooter, and skateboard. Um, so they say yeah. you can't, but I feel like I have seen a lot of kids. So it's the same those. thing though as the bikes. Don't do it during passing period because, especially during fall winter, there are literally thousands of people trying to get to class, and it's really annoying <laughs> when a bike gets get in front of you. Through. You can't get through it. You um, can't cut through the masses. And if there's a BYU police officer, they will like be like, "Hey, you need to get I'll off and walk it." Yeah, you might get a ticket. Um, but for getting around Provo, yeah. getting around oh, campus, getting when it's campus, not, that's a good great. Idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you see all sorts of. There's yeah. there's there's all sorts of cool yeah. things. Yeah, yeah there's segways. A lot of kids have those now. There's like there's like and there's all sorts yeah. of things you'll see. Yeah. yeah, lots of people though do use those. Mm-hmm. So, but also, I mean, we're BYU used to like yeah. yay, like honor code. But also, my friend had her penny board stolen, so just you know, be careful. Be aware of that. You know? Yeah. All right, we've got five minutes. Anything Any else questions? before we wrap up? Your place to eat. Okay, I always I always get the name wrong. It's either a silver dish or golden dish or a silver plate. <laughs> it's it really a t- your favorite. It's <laughs> it's the place I always go, but I can never remember. I know it's a metal and I know it's a type of it's a Thai place in um downtown. It is so good. It's my favorite place. Um yeah. Um okay, so fall semester, I was in love with this place called Ernie's. It's a sandwich shop, it makes like breakfast sandwiches. Mm-hmm. And it's super good. Lately, they've been raising their prices a ton, so I don't go there as much anymore. Bam Bam's barbecue slaps, probably my favorite right now. Um, yeah, that and McDonald's. I still eat at McDonald's a ton. <laughs> um, I <laughs> am a frequent inhabitor of brick oven pizza, mostly because it's high end pizza. But if you show them your student ID, you get half off takeout orders. So you can get like a high quality pizza, extra large for like 10 bucks. And it's really, really good. Slab pizza, you can get two really big slices for 10 bucks. Um, <laughs> but that pizza is really good. And when I say big slices, I mean like- They're big. Big, big slices, pizza. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So slab pizza is mm-hmm. actually like a three it's minute like, walk yeah, from where yeah. our building is. So it's super close. Also Penguin Brothers, they sell mm-hmm. ice cream sandwiches. I've heard they're amazing. Yeah. Let's see. Dorm, um, dorm room essentials. I haven't lived in a dorm in about three years, but <laughs> let me. Um, I don't know. Depends. I'm a dude, so it's probably a different. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I like to have like posters or like flags or something like in the room, just like decorations. So it, like kind of feels like home, but I definitely don't have as many decorations as a lot of people. Uh, don't bring candles. You can't bring yeah. candles. Um, I would say a stool. Because I'm a short person and you can raise your bed pretty high so you can fit a lot of stuff under. So it's kind of like a jump situation <laughs> mm-hmm. um, unless you have a stool. I, my freshman year, my mom bought me like one of those like organizers with like it's tall and narrow and it has like several drawers. I have used that my whole time here and it's very helpful. I would also just say make it colorful and happy because like the apartment that I'm in right now is cinder block walls and it feels like a jail if you don't decorate it well enough. So just just make sure it's not depressing. Yeah. Open some windows. That's my other piece of advice. Just keep yeah. some windows open. Put some light in. A uh, shower caddy would be smart because oh, unless yes. you're in like specifically two buildings in Helaman, um, then you'll have to like go to like the shared showers. Mm-hmm. And there's oh I forget the names. Yeah. There's like two Helaman buildings where they have like in the dorm like the four people share one bathroom, and then in Heritage they're in your apartment. Yeah. If you're living in Helaman, I recommend shower caddy and shower flip flops. Shower shoes. Um, maybe in heel in heritage it's just like it's just like an kitchen. apartment yeah, yeah you have like a full kitchen stove microwave dishwasher mm-hmm. yeah and so Helaman, you, you have do have many freezers yeah. in each of yeah. the rooms yeah or not mini freezer mini fridge that has like a little <laughs> mini freezer shelf but a mini <laughs> fridge mini, mini freezer. Yes. yeah but a note on that is that you will be sharing it so yes. my freshman year i was in heritage and i was sharing a fridge and freezer just like a normal size with six like with Five other girls there were six of us total i never had freezer space so yeah, just yeah. be aware of that yeah also just like food space in general i have um like a little portable like i want to say pantry it's like five shelves that it's like my little sh- pantry and i don't even try to fit stuff in cabinets anymore because there's just so many people normally living in your apartment mm. yeah dang any last questions get 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> well, then feel free to just yeah. unmute yourself if you're 
Mm-hmm. Not typing fast and enough. And if you think of a question <laughs> like in a couple minutes, you can always, you know, chat us or email us or call us. We won't be on the chat not because tonight. it's yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, you have to wait till tomorrow. But, um, but yeah, yeah, we love getting questions like this, especially because it yeah um, we can answer them. Day, yeah, gives us something fun to do. So yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thanks we're for gonna joining us. end it here. Um, like I said, this is being recorded. I'm not sure how exactly it will get out to you guys, but we're going to try to make sure it does. Um, thank you guys all so much. We're so excited for you to come to BYU. Um, I think we'll all be here when you guys are. So come visit yeah. us. Yeah, come visit us. Except for us. that guy who's coming back in like 2020. Oh, yeah, except for you. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> if I'm still here, I'm doing something wrong. Yes. Uh, but good luck, you guys. You're going to be great. You got yeah. this. Thank you so much. See ya. Bye.